dear friends and subscribers of cricket happenings welcome to another sensational day uh, on this on a sunday in the indian premier league 2014 where we saw one of those matches yesterday it was yusuf patan uh, who really slammed the fastest uh, 50 uh, in the ipl history to take kolkata night riders to the playoffs and today uh, it was cory anderson's bat but what was more important was that this was the first time that we had a situation where in the playoffs to qualify for the playoffs i mean we have seen ties we have seen uh, matches ending in a tie and then they play one over the super over but today it was absolutely something different that happened in the indian premier league 2014 and as i said this was the first time that this happened in the history of the indian premier league 2014 and uh, and and the reason that i'm talking about that is to tell you that mumbai indians Uh, had actually they they had to actually score the uh, score 189 runs that was put up by Rajasthan Royals in 14.3 overs to qualify for the playoffs well they didn't do they they had to but the scores were actually level there was actually a run out i'll i'll tell you what really happened so now i am going to enact enact it uh, enact it to you uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, 40 as i said they had to win in 14.3 overs and this is what really happened and this is how Uh, we came to something uh, which was pretty uh, something which was which was pretty new as far as indian premier league uh, history is concerned well so uh, but it all happened like this uh, the the for, the the 15th over was about to be begin three balls were left and mumbai indians needed nine runs to win of three deliveries the person at the crease at that point of time was cody anderson who went on to make Uh, I mean, he was not out on 94 or 43 balls with nine fours and six sixes, and Ambati Raidu, who was really, really stroking the ball superbly, was not out on 23 of eight balls with five fours. And here we begin the uh, proceedings as far as the 15th over is concerned. Nine runs required of just three deliveries for Mumbai Indians to go into the playoffs, and if they if they don't if they don't perform that act rajasthan royals would be qualifying for the indian premier league so let's see what happens the first delivery james faulkner is the bowler cory anderson is at the other end and they require another nine runs from three balls so every ball is crucial and one was probably hoping for a big hit coming in from cory anderson's bat who is absolutely well entrenched onto the crease in comes james faulkner passing umpire bowls to uh, anderson and anderson gets a thick edge oh my goodness just a single so this is really really increasing the pressure on the mumbai indians now because there are two balls in fact the first ball has yielded just a single he gets a thick edge on to it it went go went to deep third man just a single so the pressure is right on the mumbai indians to qualify now they require two scoring strokes to get into the playoffs can mumbai indians do it now raidu is on strike and james faulkner is preparing himself to bowl the second delivery james faulkner in comes james faulkner bowls to raidu and raidu has launched this over the long leg boundary what a shot from ambati raidu he just picked up faulkner's length and smited him over the long leg boundary for a six and what a shot that was from raidu he has really calmed the uh, the spectators nerves here at the wankhede stadium in mumbai so uh, so raidu is it a six and so now the equation is coming to uh, we, we we had nine runs needed of three balls and now we have seven runs scored of two balls so two runs and one ball and can mumbai indians do it now that is the question ambati raidu would be on strike james faulkner a lot of discussion going on shane watson brand hodge faulkner having a mini conference there having still uh, trying to talk it out trying to see what they have to do ambati raidu and cory anderson in a mid pitch conversation two runs required one ball for mumbai indians to qualify can mumbai indians do it let's see what happens finally faulkner goes back on the top of his bowling rap polishes the ball on his trousers waits for raidu to settle down in comes faulkner 
gingerly uh, run up to the wicket, slowly accelerates, passes umpire, and bowls to uh, Raidu and Raidu. Now this is something which is uh, actually has played it to short cover. They are heading for the second run. The first run has been taken. They are heading for the second run. And well, there is a run out. My word, this is a tremendous stuff here. Ambati Raidu has been ruled run out. Now the first run will count, but the second run won't count because he was run out. So one run will count. Now what is going to happen? But well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, it is a tie here. Um, if Mumbai Indians are 189, now what is going to happen? Are we going to have a super over? One does not know. Let's wait and watch. Uh, I mean, we are, we are seeing some conferences going on between the umpires, the Royals players. Probably Rajasthan Royals think that they have actually won the match. But no, the scores are tied. Now what's going to happen? Now let us see what is the report, uh, what's the uh, information which is coming in. The information that we have here is that uh, now for Mumbai Indians, uh, the, the very next delivery, if they have to go over the Rajasthan Royals run rate, they have to either score a 6 or a 4. There's, so, there, there are no ifs and buts. There's just one delivery to go. Ambati Raidu is gone, run out for 30. Anderson is there, but Anderson won't take the strike. The, the strike would be taken by the new batsman who is just walking into the wicket, Aditya Thare. Now, can Aditya Thare? Now, everything depends on Aditya Thare, this Mumbai batsman, uh, to all the fortunes hinge on this one particular ball, whether it will, it will really decide whether Tare can hit either a 4 or a 6, or if James Faulkner can um, keep the runs down, not giving a single run, or can he pick up a wicket. So either way, the match could be won by the Rajasthan Royals, or the match could be won by the Mumbai Indians. What is going to happen? Well, as I said, lots of discussion going on. Uh, there's a lot of finger biting going on in the, in the crowd. Uh, people are absolutely on their edge of their seats. What a match we are having. Both the teams are tied. And as I said, this is the first time in the history of Indian Premier League that we are seeing something uh, happening like this, where they have to score. I mean, it's not a super over. It's going to be single ball, one ball, and it has to be either been hit for a four or has to be hit for a six. Can Aditya Thare do it? Well, Aditya Thare definitely has the pretensions of doing it because one knows that he's an aggressive bloke. But can Aditya Thare do it? Can he take Mumbai Indians into the playoffs? We are waiting. Yes, Faulkner is going to be bowling the fourth delivery. Well, let's see what happens. In comes Faulkner, slowly starting to... Uh, get, his, get to his run-up, comes in and bowls to Aditya Thare. And Aditya Thare swung the ball over the square leg boundary for a six. Mumbai Indians have qualified for the playoffs. What a shot. This is something, uh, I would say, that is something stunning. Because Aditya Thare just won ball and he has delivered. And Faulkner, under the pressure, has bowled a full toss on the leg stump. And Thare has mauled him over the square leg boundary. All the Mumbai Indians players are rushing on to the pitch to congratulate Aditya Thare. What a shot from Aditya Thare. The very first ball and he has swung Faulkner over the square like boundary for a six. That's absolutely splendid. And Mumbai Indians, uh, keeping everybody on their edge of their seats, have entered the playoffs and they would be taking on the Chennai Super Kings. What a, what a match we have had yesterday. Yesterday it was Yusuf Patan slamming the fastest IPL 50 in the history. And here it is Aditya Thare having just one ball, one, one ball to aim at. And he has sent that soaring over the square like boundary for a six. James Faulkner is absolutely crestfallen. Uh, uh, in fact, Aditya Thare is just uh, doing something. He's looking at uh, Watson at the eye and he is also raising his, um, his, uh, his jersey. And that is the sort of excitement that Aditya and Aditya Thare, according to me, is zero. But let's talk about Corey Anderson. What a knock he has played under the circumstances. Came in as one drop. He was brought back into the team today. And look at that man of the match, Corey Anderson, what he has done for the Mumbai Indians. 95 not out of 44 balls with 9 fours and 6 brilliant sixes. And spare a thought for this man, Corey Anderson. Five runs and he could have got a century. He truly, truly deserved a century. But well, but the main thing, the bottom line is that Mumbai Indians have qualified for the playoffs. Well, Mumbai Indians, congratulations to you. You have done a great job here because 
to first lose all the matches in the United Arab Emirates on the first leg of the Indian Premier League. And today the reigning champions have really, really, uh, you know, in, in a sense they had to live up to the billing. They didn't live up to the billing in the United Arab Emirates, but they landed in India. They came back to India and they came with the determination in their, uh, in their stride and well, they have delivered. So Mumbai Indians have, have um, hosted the Rajasthan Royals and have marched into the playoffs for a meeting with Chennai Super Kings. So the playoffs have been decided now. Chennai Super Kings will take on the Mumbai Indians. Kolkata Knight Riders will take on the Kings 11 Punjab. So now, as I said, I wanted to recreate the magic here, as I said on my Twitter. And right now, what I'm going to do, now I'm going to skim through the surface here because I wanted to really, really take you down to the excitement. Now let's see what happened at the Wankhede Stadium in this particular match. Well, Rajasthan Royals were the ones who batted first. Uh, in fact, they lost uh, Shane Watson early. Uh, the toss was um, won by uh, Mumbai Indians, and Mumbai Indians, Rohit Sharma, I thought he made the right decision. Uh, that uh, he, uh, I mean, he wanted a target in front of him, and I thought that was the right decision taken by Rohit Sharma. And in the end, we all saw what happened. How the Mumbai Indians went on to win the match and qualify for the playoffs. Uh, it was a gallant job done by the Mumbai Indians. Now let's have a look at the Rajasthan card. Now, as I said, since I have spoken, dear friends and subscribers, about everything, I wouldn't be able to go into greater detail. I'm just going to skim through the things now. Rajasthan uh, batted first and put on 189 for four of their 20 overs. The feature being Sanju Samson. Today they had an opener. Sanju Samson was told to open the innings. He definitely delivered, and what a partnership that was. In fact, after losing Shane Watson early, Sanju Samson and Karun Nair also looking pretty superb. And also Sanju Samson, as you know, he's an attractive stroke maker. And both of them really went after the uh, Mumbai Indians bowlers and uh, put up a partnership uh, which was absolutely great, I would say, because they had 100 runs raised of probably 57 deliveries. Such was the power of their stroke making. And they were absolutely, I would say, it was an absolute treat to watch them. And Sanju Samson uh, was playing with effortless ease. His contribution... 74 of 47 deliveries, 7 4s and 3 6s, and Karun Nair also contributing, making 50 of 27 balls with 7 4s and 2 6s. And then it was left to Brad Hadge and Faulkner to paste, it, uh, paste the Mumbai Indians balling towards the latter, end, uh, latter stages of the match, uh, with Brad Hodge returning unbeaten on 29 of 16 balls with 2 4s and 1 6. And James Faulkner cracking 23 of just 12 balls and dealing only in sixes. Three sixes in that knock. Kevin Cooper was not on a knock. 189 for four. Looking at the bowling figures, Anderson bowled two overs for 14. Bumrah, uh, well, he has been a very good dead baller nowadays. He bowled some very good balls on the block hole. Four overs on made him one for 30 for him. Pragyan Oja, four overs, none for 31. Harbhajan Singh, uh, for the first time in Indian Premier League 2014, I thought, that he has leaked in excess of 40 runs. Was I never seen in Harbhajan Singh bowling figures going over 30 runs. And today uh, I thought Harbhajan Singh got some tap, especially Corey Anderson uh, really, um, you know, um, really got stuck on to him. Four overs, no minimum, one for 43 for Harbhajan Singh. Shreyas Gopal, three overs, was carted for 36 runs with one wicket. Kiran Polar bowled three overs for 33 runs. Now let's have a look at the Mumbai card. As far as the Mumbai Indians were concerned, uh, Lendl Simmons and Hussey started off in the right way. Uh, Simmons cracked 12 of 8 balls with 3 fours. Uh, Hussey did his bit in contributing 22 of 11 balls with 1 four and 2 sixes. Corey Anderson was promoted uh, as one drop. Kiran Polad uh, started off with a bang. The, uh, the very first, the second, uh, third delivery that he faced, uh, he actually sent uh, Kevon Cooper for a wonderful six. But Kevon Cooper, uh, really a sly fox, I would say. What he did is he bowled a back of the hand stuff. Kiran Pollard couldn't read him. Kiran Pollard ended up, and there was a real hush in the stadium at that time, at the Wankhede Stadium, when Kiran Pollard was going back to the pavilion. After that, it was uh, Rohit Sharma who came in. Rohit Sharma contributed 16 of 11 balls, 1 4 and 1 6. And as I said, Mumbai Indians had to, kept, uh, to keep on firing. They, 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 can't, they, couldn't even, uh, they can't even relax a bit, because as I said, they had to score the required target in 14.3 overs, but the man who was doing that for them was Corey Anderson, smashing the ball to all parts of the Wankhede Stadium. Pravin Tambe was slog swept by Anderson. He was slogging Pravin Tambe. Today, Pravin Tambe was taken for runs, two overs for 25. Kevin Cooper went for runs, but he also 
uh, I would say he manhandled James Faulkner towards the end uh, in score, hitting a lot of sixes and Corey Anderson. But as I said, Ambati Raidu, let's not forget about Ambati Raidu. What a very important contribution that was. Ambati Raidu, look at his knock. He played a real blinder, I would say. No, he, he, was, he was run out, as you know, in the uh, final delivery and then all the drama ensued uh, in the playoffs. And Ambati Raidu made 30 of just 10 deliveries, 5 fours and 1 sixes. And uh, it was some tremendous power and tremendous timing from Ambati Raidu. And in the final, we all know what happened. Corey Anderson, spare a thought for that guy, not out 95 of 44 deliveries, 9 fours and 6 brilliant sixes. Aditya Tari, not out on 6 of the solitary delivery that he actually had Mumbai Indians getting on to the playoffs. Have a look at the bowling figures from the Rajasthan Royals. Absolutely mauled. 3.4 overs for Faulkner. No maidens. 54 runs without a wicket. Double Kulkarni. 3 overs costing 42 runs with 2 wickets. Shane Watson bowling 2 overs. Pretty costly. 33 runs leaked out. Come on Cooper. Taken to the cleaners. 4 overs for 38 runs and 2 wickets. Not a single bowler was spared today. Uh, Pravin Tambe, uh, usually the most economical, but today uh, he couldn't really, really withstand the pressure that was created by the Mumbai Indians batsman. Two overs for 25 runs, and Mumbai Indians have sailed into the playoffs in, uh, in, in, in some, I would say, gallant style. Well, so let's leave it now. Now the, all the excitement is over. Let's simmer. Let things, things were simmering. Uh, it's all over now. Now I'm going to go on to a match which was a mere formality which happened at the Punjab Cricket Association Stadium in Mohali where King Salman Punjab and Delhi Daredevils clashed. King Salman Punjab Delhi Daredevils suffered their ninth consecutive loss in the Indian Premier League when they lost to the King Salman Punjab by seven wickets. Delhi Daredevils were absolutely, they were absolutely no match for the King Salman Punjab today. The only feature for Delhi Daredevils, they were bowled out for 115. Kevin Peterson was the master. Uh, he was the only person who scored some runs. He made 58 of 41 balls with 9 fours. There was some very sweet stroke making from Kevin Peterson. But other than that, uh, the scoreboard does not make any happy reading. And I don't want to even get into that. 115 all out, uh, the, the Delhi Daredevils. Uh, bowling, uh, pra Praveen Avana took 2 for 15. The wickets were uh, shared by Praveen Avana, uh, Akshar Patel, Mitchell Johnson and Karanveer Singh, two, two apiece and Davan taking one wicket. And as far as the Kings and Punjab were concerned, uh, well, they definitely didn't have Glenn Maxwell firing today. Glenn Maxwell, for the first time in Indian Premier League 2014, was out for a blob. He was gone for a duck. 9-2, uh, Virendra Sehwag. Manan Vora contributed 47 of 38 balls with 4 fours. Uh, David Miller getting them the victory uh, with a superb 6 uh, to end the match. 47 not out of 34 balls, 4 fours and 2 sixes. The match was all over. King Salaman Punjab had won the match. As I said it was a mere formality because King Salaman Punjab are already into the playoffs. And as you know, they are taking on the Kolkata Knight Riders. Well, now I'm going to shift it towards an international match here. And that will be the match, the second one-day international which was played today between Sri Lanka and England. And England definitely, in fact, uh, England definitely, definitely faltered here. They couldn't read the seam movement. Uh, from the Sri Lankan bowlers and later on it was spin that really really uh, brought their doom and finally it was all over in the sense Sri Lanka put up a score in fact what Sri Lanka has done uh, by winning this match by huge margin of 157 runs uh, in the at the Riverside ground here in Chesterley Street in Durham is that they have won the match by 157 runs and they have leveled the one day five match one day international series 1-1 one, one. Sri Lanka batted first uh, they put up 256 for 8 on the board of 50 overs. The feature being Thilakatne Dilshan contributing a very well made 88 of 101 balls with 7 fours. Kumar Sangakra chipping in with 40 of 67 balls with 2 fours. And then some contributions coming in from the uh, captain himself, Angelo Matthews, 30 of 35 balls with 2 fours. Ashan Priyanjan uh, getting an opportunity here. Really showed uh, why he was included by knocking 43 of 33 balls with 2 fours and 2 sixes which was hit uh, by Ashan Priyanjan of the bowling of uh, James Treadwell. And that enabled the Sri Lankan, uh, Sri Lanka definitely recovered, I thought. They weren't of sort of some strife when they were 159 for 4 and Dilshan departed in the 38th over. But then they soon recovered to post a total of 256 for 8 of their 50 overs. As far as the English bowling was concerned, James Anderson uh, bowled well, 238 of his full quota of 10 overs, one maiden. 
Harry Gurney uh, got, uh, got taken for runs, uh, but uh, he definitely picked up wickets towards the end, 3 for 59. Jordan couldn't do much of a, um, I mean, couldn't make much of an impression today. Uh, 10 was no made in 1 for 56. Bopara, 9 was for 40. James Treadwell, uh, 10 was no made in 1 for 57. Root, 1 over no made in 1 run. And look at the England card. Now, as far as England were concerned, uh, England had their troubles right from the beginning. It all started with um, uh, Kula Shekhar uh, picking up two wickets. As I said, uh, the problem for England was that they were not able to negotiate. If you look at the England card, uh, they were all out for just 99 runs. So that was some dismal batting from the Englishman, I thought. Uh, but uh, what, was, uh, what I would really state here, other than Oin Morgan, who contributed 40 or 58 balls with three fours and two sixes, who was the acting captain uh, in place of uh, Alistair Cook, uh, was not available. But uh, other than that, there's nothing to really talk about. It is all about the Sri, the Sri Lankan bowling. Kulashekara was moving the ball both ways, and it was very, very difficult for the English uh, batsman to really negotiate. Uh, he got, uh, first he got the wicket, he provided the breakthrough by getting Michael Carberry uh, with a delivery that probably Michael Carberry never thought that would be moving out. He was sucked then. After that, Ian Bell uh, got a ball, which again, Ian Bell uh, was uh, really in two minds as to what to do. Uh, by, that, by the time everything was over. Uh, Gary Balance uh, also uh, was done in by a beautiful delivery from Nuan Kulashekara. Malinga uprooted the stumps of Joe Root for a duck. Uh, Jan Morgan was the only one who uh, uh, did something of note with a knock of 40 or 58 balls in an in a, in a English total of uh, 99 all out. After that, we have a phone number coming in. Ravi Bapara was out for seven, and then it was the turn. Once uh, the Kulashekara, uh, Malinga and Prasad had done their job, uh, it was in the hands of the spinners. Sena Naike proved to be pretty, pretty daunting. And it was very, very difficult for England to get out of jail. As Sena Naike first clean ball Ravi Bapara for seven. Butler was sent to the pavilion by Matthews for four. Jordan was LBW by the spinner for one. Treadwell was a victim of Sena Naike for four. Anderson was uh, clean ball by Sena Naike for seven. Harry Goodney was not out on nine. And a dismal performance from the, uh, from the England team here. Uh, losing the match by a huge margin of 157 runs. England were all out for 99. They couldn't even play their full quota of overs. That was something which was baffling. In 26.1 overs, uh, in England totally, totally surrendered to Sri Lanka. Look, let's uh, look, have a look at the bowling. Uh, Kula Shekhar moving the ball both ways. Had all the English batsmen in trouble. Six overs, three maidens, 15 runs and three wickets to his name. Lasit Malinga uh, did his part. Four overs, one maiden, 17 runs and one wicket. Damika Prasad, 6 overs, 1 for 36. Sachitra Sena Naike, have a look at his bowling figures. 7.1 overs, 1 maiden, 13 runs, measly performance, measly bowling from uh, Sena Naike. 4 wickets is capped for 13 runs. Angel Matthews, 2 overs, no maiden, 1 for 9. Dilshan, 1 over for 6. And Tirgadne Dilshan was named man of the match. Well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, that really, really concludes my cricket happening show. Uh, we don't have any matches coming up tomorrow. Uh, but yes, your cricket happening show would definitely be up because there has to be one cricket happening show for uh, for the day, for sure. So I'll definitely be there to talk about something on cricket, no doubt about that. But well, dear fans and subscribers, my adrenaline was pumping today and I think uh, I, I really, really uh, brought you, uh, dear friends and subscribers of cricket happenings, a great pleasure uh, in watching this cricket show of mine. I hope uh, you all liked it. Thanks for your company as always. Uh, thanks for your superb contributions. Th thanks for your um, uh, tremendous support to the cricket show. And I'm also seeing that um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see that you guys are really, really loving my show. Thank you very much, dear friends and subscribers. Your host, Ram, is uh, about to end this cricket show for today. Uh, but promising you, your host, Ram, will be up with you tomorrow uh, in, on my next cricket happening show. Until then... It's goodbye for the day.